Just a few weeks ago, Opener, a startup that's been operating in stealth mode for the best part of a decade, exited stealth and showed the world what it's been working on all this time. A single seat, all electric, autonomous flying car called the Blackfly. Backed by Google's Larry Page, it's the third flying vehicle company he's helped fund, the Blackfly might be called a flying car by many, but unlike some vehicles out there, it can't be driven on the road. Instead, think of it like a giant drone that can transport a human, called a personal vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL, craft. It can take off and land pretty much anywhere with enough space, since it's a vertical takeoff and landing, even water. And it has something that a lot of its competitors in the ever increasingly crowded personal air travel space don't. It's already flight approved in the United States and Canada as an ultra light vehicle. But here's the thing. We've seen plenty of these vehicles hit the headlines over the last couple of years, and we've heard plenty of promises that will soon be flying high above busy city streets, avoiding all the traffic jams, and getting back all the time we're currently wasting just getting to and from work. To date, we haven't seen any make it to the market, at least not yet. So is the Blackfly really going to be any different? As I've previously noted, the airworthiness of the Blackfly does give it a severe leg up in the competition, and its design is certainly more futuristic vehicle than weird science experiment. It can also be packed up and stowed in a regular garage or towed on a trailer behind a car, meaning even if there's nowhere for you to launch it at home, you can always take it somewhere else to fly it. Then there's the entry point in terms of skill. Opener says the Blackfly is very intuitive in its controls and claims you don't need a pilot's license to fly it in the US, although in Canada you do, you need an ultralight certification. There's also an autopilot system of sorts to take care of landing or flying, and three backup control systems should keep you in the air. There's even a whole vehicle parachute in case everything else fails. In other words, this is a great way to get in the air. But at a limited 25 miles of flight per charge, even when combined with a promised ultra-fast 25-minute recharge time from a special charging station, the Blackfly isn't going to replace traditional airplane travel, even traditional private planes, even traditional private electric planes. And that's going to limit its use outside of the city to being something of a leisure craft. Priced around the same price as a standard SUV, at least according to Opener, it may be more affordable than some other flying vehicles that have gone before it. But again, it's a sizable investment for something with just a limited set of applications. There are, however, some exceptions where owning a black fly might work for private owners. For example, if you live on the west side of the Puget Sound in Washington, or any similar area with large bodies of water splitting areas of population up, a black fly could help you get from one side of the lake to the other without relying on ferries or taking a long drive. Private ownership, though, is probably going to be something for the wealthy. And while I can see some people buying one to have in their garage alongside a Tesla Model S or X, I don't think your average car driver will be handing over their wheels for one yet. So what of corporate ownership? Well, that might be different. It's conceivable that the black fly could be used in busy cities to get you from point A to point B far faster than you could using an underground metro system, allowing you to fly from one tall building to the other without having to worry about congestion in the streets below. But to do so would require fully autonomous operation because we wouldn't want VTOL personal craft crashing into each other or buildings. Although that wouldn't necessarily be a problem. Autonomous flying is easier in some ways than autonomous driving, since you're not sharing the skies with other humans who are going to do unpredictable things, like walk across the road or wobble into your path on their bicycle. But airspaces above major cities are already very crowded with commercial aircraft, meaning small VTOL craft like this would have to steer clear of flying above a certain ceiling and would also need to stick to certain pre-approved paths to avoid getting in the way of major airport approach finals. Again, that's not going to be a huge major issue, but this is something to consider when evaluating flight times and costs. An enterprising commercial entity could certainly use the black fly for taxi services across a major city, but they'd also need to account for the craft being in the air only half of the time because the rest of the time would be spent recharging, and that would certainly affect fares. So will the black fly take to the skies? Probably. Will it revolutionize the way we travel? No, not yet. Right now, people have enough trouble transitioning to electric vehicles and autonomous car tech to even contemplate getting into the air. 
Eventually though, well, we may look back and remember the Black Fly as one of the first vehicles to challenge how we travel in the sky but we're not quite yet at that Model T moment for the form of transport. Now that's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Subscribe to both of our channels, and if you fancy it, support us by using one of the two links below or by buying something from our shop. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep evolving.